In this video, we will discuss grading objects. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1103 gradingobjects.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working With This Dataset video. All grading objects will be defined by a set of grading criteria. Design grading criteria controls the geometry and behavior of your grading objects. In most designs, multiple grading objects with different criteria will be used to model your site. Grading criteria is set in the Settings tab, Grading category, and then we have Grading Criteria Sets. You can define multiple sets for different types of grading, for let's say doing pond design, or doing berm design, or as the ones are listed here, just some generic ones that allow you to do a lot of grading criteria. Before you can do any kind of grading, you need a grading group. However, when you start grading, you can create the grading group on the fly. I'm going to select one of my feature lines to start the grading process. Note that you can pick grading from right here. But let's just go ahead and do it this way. We'll select my feature line, and then in the launch pad, we have the grading creation tools. This launches the grading creation tools, and in here, I need to tell Civil 3D exactly the group I want to model with and the surface about which to daylight to if I choose a gray to surface grading criteria. So first, let's go ahead and pick this here to select the grading group. And what's very crucial is that you create or select a grading group within the site where your feature lines exist. If you do not do this, you will not be able to create any kind of grading objects from those feature lines. Again, they all interact with each other. So I have no groups yet, so let's just select the Create New Grading Group. And what we'll do, we'll just call this one Parking Lot. Right now, we do not want to turn on Automatic Service Creation because it'll just slow down the drawing a little bit. We'll turn this on when we're all said and done with our grading objects. Click OK. We now have a grading group. Click OK to dismiss the grading group dialog box. Now we need to select a surface about which that we want to daylight to. So we'll go ahead and set the target surface and we want combined EG. Now let's just look at a couple of these here. Let's go ahead and do the grade to distance. We'll go ahead and from the drop down here, pick create grading and then just follow the prompts in the command line window. First, we'll select our feature. Pick your side that you want to grade to. And then it says, do you want to apply the entire length? You can actually define transitions between gradings if you want to. For now, we'll go ahead and do the entire length. We'll type a distance in of five feet, and then we want to do a grade of let's say 6%. That creates our grading and notice how it automatically goes around all the geometry. If let's say I decide I don't want that grading, Civil 3D provides very easy tools to delete your grading. So as you just hover your mouse over the grading, you will see it highlight in the drawing, simply pick it and it's deleted. Let's go ahead and grade to a surface. We'll pick the Create Grading tool, and then just following the prompts, it says select the feature, so I want to select my feature. Pick the side I want to grade to, say yes for the entire length, and then I want a slope of, we'll start with four to one when that feature goes in cut, and we'll do a slope of four to one when it goes in fill. And just like that, as you can see in the 3D view, we automatically have our grading. Holding the shift and middle button, we can actually rotate the view in this 3D view to see the design. Let's say we decide that's just too much fill volume. We want to just change this to, let's say, 2 to 1. I'll go ahead and choose this drop down here and choose Edit Grading. I'll hover over the object, and then automatically it knows what was used to create that grading object. I'll simply press Enter for slope, and let's say we want to do a 2 to 1 in the cut, and then a 2 to 1 in the fill, and automatically our grading object will update. Pretty cool stuff. Now to complete this design here, we need to actually add in the feature lines. So what you can actually do is select your feature lines in the drawing. I'll just select these three that I have created. And in the contextual ribbon, I can add to surface as break line. Now right now, I do not have the surface just yet. So before we do that, let's go ahead and create that surface. So we'll go into the parking lot grading groups properties by right clicking on here and go to properties. And we'll toggle on the automatic surface creation. Give it a style, give it a name, click OK. The tessellation is where you define how it tessellates or the triangulation increments that should occur between curves. That's what this means here. If you want to do a volume base, we'll toggle that on as well to get automatic volume calculations. And then click OK. And now we have a surface from our grading object. Again, you change anything about that grading object, the surface will update automatically. I have my feature lines already selected, and I can now add these to the actual grading surface. We'll click Add to Surfaces Break Lines, select our surface, 
Press OK, and then we'll give it a description. We'll say feature lines. These are standard brake lines. And note how you can actually add some supplemental factors to increase the triangulation between those objects. This will make your surface a little larger and slower to work with in the drawing, but it'll make your surface more accurate. I'll click OK here. And then just like that, I now have my surface updated. Let's go ahead and take it into the object viewer. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's almost there, but we're missing a few areas where it looks like there's a hole in the surface. What you have to do is create what's called an infill in these locations. So what I can do is I can actually zoom in here and select one of my grading objects here. And then in the contextual tab, I will click on the create grading infill. And then I'll pick the areas. Notice how Civil 3D is automatically finding the areas that it must create the infill for. We now have an updated surface. Again, pretty cool stuff. If I wanted to change this surface's style to a style that would show some arrows for slope drainage, I can select the surface, go to the properties palette, and as long as I have a style that does that in the drawing, I can select the triangles and slope arrows, which we created in an earlier video. You'll see that you can see some immediate feedback as to how this surface is draining. Pretty amazing stuff. You have your parking lot. This concludes this video discussing grading objects.